Hi everyone, Nathan with Back to the Frame right here with a review of the latest from George Miller. I'm talking Furiosa of Mad Max Saga. First, I'll say the obvious. This is the biggest and most ambitious entry in this franchise. But I found the results to be somewhat problematic. More than any other film in the series, it has an epic feel to it. This is his Star Wars, his Dune, his Indiana Jones-esque sweeping grand tale. On that level, I applaud the effort. But something is lost in the mix here. There were several just outstanding action set pieces, of course, most notably the big set piece at the Bullet Farm, and also a great action driving sequence with Furiosa and Praetorian Jack that was reminiscent of the type of action we saw on Fury Road. But at the same time, I felt like I was watching Mad Max's greatest hit show. This is the first film in the franchise that is fully conscious of the past lore. The previous three sequels all have felt like they could be watched and enjoyed independently of each other, but Furiosa is steeped in the past and the future. It's dependent on its audiences bringing baggage to the franchise, and now the agenda has shifted to creating a franchise which has me a bit concerned because I think one of the strengths of these films is the lack of cohesion. I also feel this movie suffers from the same problem that the Star Wars franchise is dealing with. And my biggest complaint about that franchise is that it keeps on returning back to the Skywalker storyline. It can't go a single movie or a season without some connective tissue to the original Skywalker saga. It keeps interconnecting that main plot, thus making what should be a huge galactic story feel small. I got the same vibe here. There's this vast world that we could be exploring, yet here we are again, bouncing between the Citadel and Gastown and the Bullet Farm. It's the same locations, a lot of the same characters we've already seen before. I wish this film instead expanded the Mad Max universe into new locations with new characters. Now there are some new characters, and I'm not denying that. Chris Hemsworth's portrayal of Dementis is one of the best scene-tuned performances in recent memory, possibly his best role ever. But we get a lot of him, and it's an example of where I think I would have liked his character a lot more if I saw a little less of him. Keep in mind, historically, villains in the Mad Max films are side characters, and for the first time ever, a villain is now a featured character. It's definitely a new direction, and I know some people are very divided on his performance, but at least we can all agree that Hemsworth is doing, you know, at least he's doing uh, a strong choice here, and he's committed to the role. So finally, I'll just say I loved many parts of this film, and I do look forward to seeing it again. Hey, I've already bought the 4K, but this is a case where I feel that the sum of the parts is greater than the whole. And I'm giving this three and a half out of five stars.